Let praise be a weapon. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let's do it this morning. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing Jesus, yes. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Yeah. So let it Break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation, cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith. We trust you, Lord. We believe. Yes, we believe. Yes. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that So let it rise, let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall, we'll watch the giants fall. Well, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever. Us this morning we pray, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Yes, God, we praise you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let heaven come to earth. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Yeah, yeah. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Yeah, this is what living looks like. What freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you Hey, yeah We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall We'll fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cried God we praise One day I used to be evangelizing, cleaning windows. People who was up in these apartments, two and three stories up, I'd be up on the top of the ladder, clinging onto the, the stones on the wall and laying hands on the old men and women in the windows, praying for their salvation, baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I was there in a living. And God told me, John, I want to teach you a principle. He spoke to me up on the ladder. I want to teach you the principle of sowing your finances. I said, but Lord, I hardly have any. <laughs> Nevertheless, I want you to teach you the principle. I want you to begin to give. And from that day in my life, I began to be a giver. I began to sow into people's lives. I began to buy homeless people food, buy them coffee, buy them tea, 
make sure that they're all right. I began to bring people into my little apartment that had a one room, we called them a flat. We had a little one room apartment, one room flat. I began to bring people in, drug addicts, drug dealers, gangsters, all kinds of people would come into my home. I began to lay hands on them, lead them to Christ. Miracles began to happen. I began to feed them. So they began to, then people up and down the road began to come to me. I began to sow into their lives. Then the guy who owns the shop across the road heard about the meetings I was having, that I was feeding people, I was giving into people's lives, I was giving them hope, I was giving them a future. I began to become a voice for those people who have no voice. The guy across the road, Jimmy was his name, he heard about what I was doing. He told all the neighbors, they all come to my house. We had a mini revival even before I went to Christian rehab, amen. I was still smoking cigarettes at the time, but I had a cigarette in one hand and laying hands on the stick in the other hand. I didn't know any better. Didn't know any better, but that's the way I was living my life. Continuing to sow into people's lives. Then all of a sudden, I began to reap a little bit. People began to sow back into me. I remember one day, Father Gerald, the local Catholic priest, came down. He heard about this move of God that was happening in my home. And Father Gerald came down, the Catholic priest came down to check me out. Father Gerald ended up getting baptized in the Holy Ghost and gave his life to Jesus Christ. Amen. We began to have a move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're excited about this Saturday from 5 to 7. We actually have four sign-up sheets of opportunities to serve. We have altar care ministry, which when, when John Edwards asked those to come forward who wants to give their lives to Christ or start afresh, we want a team to go down and stand with them and just be there to pray with them and give them a couple pieces of pam pamphlets. And we also have these postcards. So if you would like to get a postcard, if I can get some ushers. I'm sorry. We have postcards up here. If you didn't give anybody one of these, we encourage you to give at least two people, three people, a postcard to come and be part of this amazing outreach. We also have opportunities to serve with Setup and Teardown. And uh, we're going to do some street ministry this week and give these out. So we're excited about this. We're expecting a harvest of souls and touching many people in Elwood that are struggling. I'm told that, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the right statistic statistic, say that five times, but I'm pretty sure it's 70% of the Elwood does not work, is not, is not employed. So we need to pray for our city, that we will get jobs and quit living off of the government, <laughs> and to just love on them and care for them, and be there for them. So come on out, and let's care about our city. Amen. And Gail, come on back and give your, you had some more announcements about Narina, I think you were on Narina. having a memorial service, Norena Owens, and it's going to be June 18th right here at our pavilion. There's going to be a lot of food, so you're going to come out. That's really going to, that's going to be 11 o'clock at the pavilion for Norena Owens. And that same day, June 18th at 1130, the ladies are getting together for a brunch. It's going to be at Mike's Restaurant on Lawrence Avenue at 1130, so you'd like to be able to be a part of that also. And I believe there is an opportunity. Bob has some things he wanted to share. Do you want to mention that okay Bob you want to come down a minute I want to mention also the Memorial Day praise are coming that's a wonderful opportunity to go out and share Jesus and just smile give him a track and give him one of these <laughs> gatherings it's a good thing to do too because that's on Monday tomorrow the gathering is on June 4th so Bob's going to explain that yeah the gathering when we do uh, go there um, we're going to be passing out tracks we're going to do it on a level where we just start up a conversation with somebody and give them a track. You don't have to purpose anything but purpose the Holy Spirit to minister to them, amen? So that's what we're gonna do at the gathering. Also, uh, Beaver Falls is gonna have a uh, car cruise and um, on the 11th. And, um, you need one? Thank you, no, I'm, you got good. It. I'm good, good. You're good. I'm good, thank you. On the 11th, so we're gonna do the same. We're gonna walk the streets, start up a conversation, and hand them a track and let the Holy Spirit do the work. But we got to do that. We have to be instrumental and faithful in passing out tracks. Got to get the word out. Amen. And um, also, the same day, because I've got my notes, the speaker uh, is going to be there, um, John Edwards. And so we're going to, well, we're going to support him as well. Amen. So that's in Beaver Falls on the 11th. So come on out. I said, come on out. Don't sit down. 
Stand up and come on out. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this service, Lord God. It is ordained by you, Father, for us to be here today. Father God, you have something for each and every one sitting in this assembly today. Father God, they just got to release the faith to reach out and grab it in Jesus' name. So, Father, let their eyes and ears of understanding be open as pastor preaches today. Let that word go forth and not return void. And everybody says in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand together.
Let praise arise. Let it rise in this place this morning. Let's sing it together. Sing it out. We sing your name in the dark and it changes every. We sing with all. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. So let it rise. Let praise arise. Amen. Amen. You're faithful, God. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. Let faith be the song that overcomes. The raging, yeah, sing it out. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. So let it rise. Let faith, let faith arise. Let's declare it this morning. Oh, let your faith rise. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Sing it out. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Well, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh, we praise you. And oh. is going to praise him this morning we praise you god yes lord we praise you in this house this morning you are worthy god you are worthy let the high praises of god be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand so god we are here shouting the victory lord we with you lord we cannot be defeated lord Amen, amen. Say it with me. I got the victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. again with me you are here you are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you are the way you 
He is the way. He makes a way. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching every heart. I worship you. We worship. I worship. you God you are here turn the lives around I worship you I worship you are here you are here man in every heart I worship you I worship see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop never stop working you never stop never stop working. yeah we believe it even when I don't feel it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop never stop working we believe it God let's sing it out even when even when I see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop never stop working you never stop never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop never stop working you never stop never stop In Mark, the fourth chapter, the Sea of Galilee was in front of the disciples, and Jesus got in a boat, and he says, we are going to the other side. And I want you to know today, 
that if you'll stick with Jesus, he'll get you to the other side. Because he's the way maker. I don't care what you're going through. No matter how difficult the situation, Jesus will get you to the other side. How many have faith in him today to do just that? Come on, let's praise him for it. He's the way maker. Glory to God. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every, over every heart and every mind. Because I know, because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every, till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear, and over fear and all anxiety, till every soul, till every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus, cause your name, your name is power, your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every, break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Cause your name, cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name. Stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Burn like a fire in us today. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus for my family. Speak the holy name, Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, oh, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. Your name is healing, 
Psalm 147 verse 11 says, God takes pleasure in his people. Do you know, you cause God to have delight. You're his children. Isn't it wonderful to be called the children of God? As many as received him, to they even gave he power to become the sons of God. Behold what manner of love it is. Behold what manner of love that he hath to us, that we might be called the sons of God and daughters of God. He takes pleasure in you. You bring Him delight. And I'm telling you, when you delight yourself in Him, He's going to give you the desires of your heart. Isn't He a good God? Isn't He wonderful? Come on, let's lift our hands and praise Him tonight. Thank you, Father. Someone in here right now battling a throat situation, just go ahead and receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Someone's been injured in their back. Just receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. In this manifested presence of God. Thank you, Father. Someone's feet, and I think it's their toes. God's touching them right now in Jesus' name. Just receive it. That's called a word of knowledge. Thank you, Father. Just say, yes, Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. You love me so much that you do that right now. i point that out. And then anybody else that's in difficulties or in pain, lift your hands to heaven and say, yes, Lord, I receive it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory. Everybody say, for the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. But we want to honor. We want to say, you know, the Bible says, give honor where honor is due. I think it's Romans 13, 7. So we want to say thank you and appreciate and have gratitude for all those that have given their lives on the battlefield today. And I know many of you served in military. By the way, Roberta Adams' dad. What was he, Roberta? 103? 103 years old when he passed away. He was at Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. Now, he was injured, but anyhow, lived to be 103 years old. And uh, awesome. Uh, we thank God for your service. We want to say thank you and honor those who've given they're all. You know, my dad was in the military, and so when he passed away, they gave us this flag, you know, and in it, in it there's several empty shells from the 21-gun salute. So we keep this and cherish this American flag. Now, he didn't die in the war, but today that's what we're celebrating and thanking God for and showing appreciation for those who've given their all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, no greater love hath a man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. That's applicable, isn't it? Jesus, maybe John 15 was talking about himself, giving his own life for us, but yet it's applicable, too, to the soldiers and to the, even the, the uh, apostles who were martyred, right? But it's applicable to us, amen, to the soldiers, to the military people who've given their lives. So we th say thank you. Father, we thank you and pray for the families of all these fallen heroes, Father. And we ask that you would bless them, strengthen them this day, Father, and let them know that their sacrifice was not in vain. We are grateful, Lord. We're appreciative today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing that chorus about Jesus one more time, if you would. We shout, Jesus. If you're not standing, if you can feel free to stand with us. Shout, Jesus, from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus for my family. Speak the holy name. Jesus. 
Jesus in the streets of Jesus in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, one more time. Oh, Jesus, shot Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Everybody say the name of Jesus. Oh, that name that's above every name and the only name by which men can be saved. Isn't that wonderful? It ain't Muhammad. It ain't anybody else, right? It's only Jesus by which we can get saved. Amen. I'll tell someone Jesus loves you, and you can go ahead and be seated today. Good seeing all of you today. Glory to God. Good to see my friend Chris back here. God bless you, bro. All right. Hey, can we have some ushers come on up? I want to pass some things out. We like to talk about the uh, Take Back America campaign. So if you'd... Uh, We always like to give you some literature to keep you updated on what's going on, keep you enlightened. Amen? Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're not here. We're going to give you, let you know what's going on. Well, listen, I um, wanted to share with you, in, in conjunction with that, consider the testimony of a high school girl and captain of the girls' track team from right here in central Pennsylvania who spoke to state lawmakers about her plight. Last year, a boy who ran cross country for that school in the fall and had at some point after that began to identify as a girl and was welcome to compete on the girls team in the spring of 2021. The impact, not only did the team captain and her teammates and girls from the other schools unfairly now have to compete against the physically stronger and faster male, but the injustice carried into the locker room. I'll never forget hearing this girl testify that some of the girls instead of chose to change in their in the porta potty rather than undress in the presence of a biological male in their locker room. Unbelievable but true. But thank God they're doing something about it. Amen. So we support the Pennsylvania Family Institute who helps out those with those things. So that's just to help keep you informed. And I want to let you know that you're giving toward feeding the nations. We sow into the feeding the nations every month, probably about $150 a month. But they're telling us now that um, uh, let's see, Feeding the Nations is helping children in Africa, the Caribbean, Central and South America, and yes, Ukraine as well. And uh, that's beginning with February 24th through this present day. Your donations fed, clothed, housed, and helped safely evacuate families in the, and the elderly in the Ukraine. Your donations also provided for families and orphaned children still in the Ukraine and unable to leave. Amen. The risk of unprecedented starvation is very real in this nation. So today, on your um, envelopes there for your giving, if, ushers, if you'd pass those out, we'd like you to go ahead and mark on your envelope if you'd like to sew anything into Feeding the Nations. Feeding the Nations, all right? Now, what we're supposed to do is to bring our supply. Now, that supply that we have is spiritual and our material supply as well. In Deuteronomy 16, 16, the Bible tells us that they shall not appear before the Lord empty. In other words, at these feasts and so forth, Feast of Tabernacles and Passover and Pentecost and all those feasts, they shall not appear empty-handed. They shall bring a, a, a gift. They shall bring their tithe. And so... Don't come empty-handed. And everyone is supposed to bring a supply. That's what it says, the supply of the Spirit. In Ephesians 4, 16, it talks about every joint supplying. Uh, you're, you're a member of the body of Christ, and so we're all joints, all right? <laughs> Not marijuana joints now, but okay. But we're supposed to be supplying. And bring our supply. Bring our supply of what? Let's bring our supply of prayer, uh, your interaction in the church. Maybe to help greet at the door or be an usher or help behind the scenes in some way. 
Uh, with something that needs to be done. Everyone is to bring a supply of the Spirit. Now, that's a spiritual supply, but there's also then the, the material supply as well. And so that's what we're hearing about today, every joint supplying. So let's go ahead and give this morning, and you can mark on your envelope then. Here's all you need to put. He's feeding the nations, F-T-A, F-T-N, excuse me, F-T-N, feeding the nations for that portion that you'd like to sow into to the uh, feeding the nations this morning. All right? Glory to God. How many are happy that you're in love with Jesus? Amen. How many know the devil cannot be your finisher because he's not your author, right? Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. By the way, I want to mention one other thing too. It's Jerusalem Day today over in Israel. You say, what's Jerusalem Day? That's a day that celebrates 55 years ago the reunification of Israel. 1948, 55 years ago. Well, I don't know if that's 55, but anyhow, it was a reunification of Israel 55 years ago. Now, they're concerned about some riots that might break out, fomented by Hamas, because last year the same thing happened. They fired rockets that almost reached Jerusalem from the Golan Heights and so forth, but they're concerned that something else might take place today. People are celebrating this reunification of Israel ceremony and they're waving flags and uh, you know just having a great time but uh, this anta tends to antagonize the Muslims to retaliate in some way so today we can prevent another war from breaking out in Israel to this very day today now Jerusalem days and how can we do it by our prayers so let's just take a minute and pray and uh, I'm going to ask Brother Gail if you would pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now, Brother. Would you do that? Thank you. Father, we just thank you. We come into an agreement with your word. And Father, we just thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. We break the veil that's over the eyes of the Jews and speak life. We send the word of God and the blood of Jesus to protect and bring him into the saving knowledge of Jesus. We're in agreement with that, Father. We thank you. You turn the hearts of the Jews and bring blessings upon them, Father. Open their eyes to the glorious gospel. And, Father, we're going to give you praise. You'll do it right now. We send the word of God over to Israel right now, Father, bringing the salvation of Christ, Yeshua, Amashiach, to come upon the Jewish people. We're believing for them. We thank you. You'll do it because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So just put on your envelopes, FT and feeding the nations. And one other thing I wanted to mention. Those of you who'd like to help out with our uh, gathering, the day of the gathering on June the 4th, which is this coming Saturday, you'd like to help with altar care ministry, well, we've got a sign-up sheet here that you, you can help out with that. So we'll just start that right here, and you can go ahead and uh, pass it around, sign your name if you can be here next Saturday at the, at, down at the uh, plaza. Yeah, down at the plaza. Help us out. That'd be great. All right. Yes, pray for the offering. <laughs> Amen. Praise you, Father God. We thank you and praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offerings, Father God, and our praise as well, Father God. We thank you that you always care about our needs, that you always love us. Your mercies are new every morning. Your mercy, your love, your grace just abounds towards us. Let each of us know your love, Father God, but as we worship you, it is a privilege, it is an honor to worship you with our giving today. And we praise and thank you that you use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that that giving might become your hands and your feet, and we would all have a boldness, Father God, to speak your word, to care for others, and to reach out with love to every person we encounter. In the name of Jesus, amen. And Donna will be teaching that class after church today on the, how to live in victory. Amen. So be sure to come be right down the hall there. All right, let's worship him. Let's stand. Oh, praise the Father. Praise the Son.
Christ you got for us, Jesus. No praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, have you come expecting today? Are you hungry? <laughs> Matthew 5, 9 says, hunger and thirst after righteousness, and you shall be filled. Amen. Well, you can turn in your Bibles to John chapter 15, and I'll just share a couple little things to make you smile here. A kindergarten girl was drawing a picture in class, and she says, I'm drawing... And the teacher says to her, well, what are you drawing, honey? And she says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher says, well, no one knows what God looks like. And the little girl says, they will in a minute. <laughs> How about the one about Jonah? It was swallowed by a whale, and the little boy was actually drawing a picture of that, in Jonah being swallowed by a whale. You can cut her just a hair, Paul. And uh, the teacher says to him, oh, honey, I tell you, that it's impossible for a whale to swallow a man. That'll never, that could never have happened. And he says, oh, yes, it happened. Sure, absolutely. She says, oh, no, no. He says, yeah, when I get to heaven, uh, I'll, I'll ask Jonah about it. And the teacher says, well, what if Jonah's not in heaven? The little boy says, then you can ask him. <laughs> Do you find John chapter 15? Now, I quoted this a moment ago, but no greater love has a man than this, than to lay down his life for his friend. I believe that's verse 13, isn't it? You are my friends. Oh, that's verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. But verse 13 says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And we said that could be relative to Jesus going to the cross, going to his death. But it also ha could have reference to the disciples and the apostles who laid down their lives for the gospel. And it could have reference to the soldiers, the military people, who have given their lives for our freedoms. So as Pastor Gail was saying, please try to make it to a parade tomorrow. I'm going to get to a parade somewhere. And you need to go and express your gratitude and your appreciation for the the price that was paid and because see these people that gave their lives actually won our freedoms for us didn't they just like Jesus gave his life to give us freedoms it says it is for freedom that Christ has made us free well these people gave their lives that we can enjoy freedoms what kind well freedom of speech you can talk about your faith anywhere you want to college campus, downtown Elwood City, anywhere. Freedom of worship. You can worship any way you choose to, where you choose to. And you don't have to be concerned about someone coming in and arresting you because of your, your worship. You know, we, don't have, we don't have underground churches in America, right? You're free to start your own business and maybe incorporate or have an LLC or you know, isn't that wonderful? In other countries, they can't do this. You're free to raise your children in a godly manner without government control or interference to raise them as you see fit. You're free to choose a vocation of your liking and not have to go take a government test to find out what you're suited for, and then the government tells you what job you're going to work. Oh, yeah, this happens in countries. You're free to have interstate travel and cross state lines without a passport. Isn't that wonderful? We can go to Ohio or Indiana, wherever we want. We're free to vote for the elected officials that best align themselves with your particular political views 
without fear that someone's going to do something against you. Although some of that's been tried to be imposed on, but isn't that wonderful that we're free to vote because we're, we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We are blessed with the freedom that if you're accused of a crime, they have to give you due process of law. They just cannot throw you in jail for, for 20 years without some sort of a trial, right? And you're innocent until proven guilty. Not guilty until you're proven innocent, but innocent until you're proven guilty. In fact, we have the right of, the, of what's called the writ of habeas corpus, which means that they can't just throw you in prison for a bunch of years without having some judge say that this is the accusation or this is the charge against you, you know. But they do this in other countries. See? So we are blessed. And what other freedoms do we have? Well, we have the freedom to choose for our children whether to go to the public school, a charter school, a private school, home school, or a Christian school. They don't have that privilege in many countries. You have the freedom to marry whomever you want. Now, my wife and I met, met some people from India, and uh, their marriage was arranged by the parents. How many would like to have an arranged marriage? Well, anyhow. Aren't you glad we live in America? You see, these liberties are why so many different groups, ethnic groups, and people from different countries are doing their best to come across our southern borders and to come into our countries to enjoy these freedoms, to come to the land of opportunity where no matter what you look like or what your ethnic background is, you have the opportunity to become somebody by hard work, study, and then getting a good education. Isn't that true? Oh, my, we need to appreciate this country. I mean, Ben Carson and Dr. Jackson, both neurosurgeons. And, and then uh, we got, uh, what's this guy? Herschel Walker just recently was voted in. What is he, a senator now? Yeah. Glory to God. Anyone who works hard has an opportunity, wants to study. Now, over in Turkey, we found out from our missionary that there, there are many pastors who were, have been arrested and thrown in jail and their churches were disbanded. Precious are the freedoms that we enjoy because we are not under communist rule or under Nazi domination. Amen. Glory be to God. Go ahead. Thank God for it today. Hallelujah. Because we won World War I and World War II, we are not speaking Japanese today or every so often saying, Heil Hitler. Amen, right? Amen. But people had to shed their life's blood in order for that to happen. And we're thankful for their sacrifices. We have a video clip back there. You want to show that for us on Memorial Day? in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. 
but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us. I think we have a couple of pictures back there, too. Our troops gave their lives at Bataan, Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, the Coral Islands, Midway, Guam, Pearl Harbor, Okinawa. I just saw a documentary last night. 12,520 of our men died in, at Okinawa, and probably a lot more at Normandy and the Battle of the Bulge and so forth and so on. <clears throat> but it I think every one of these men that gave their lives would simply want us to be grateful and to just be thankful and appreciate, right? Thank God we're not under communist rule and, and we enjoy the freedoms that we have because of their sacrifice. So, I hope you all go to a parade tomorrow, express your gratitude and appreciation for what was done for us. Amen? How many agree with that? Shout amen. amen. <laughs> well, next Sunday is... is Pentecost Sunday, and we're going to be having John Edwards here, and he's preaching, so I won't get a chance to preach on Pentecost, so I'm going to preach on it today. Is that all right with you? <laughs> Amen. So there are three main feasts that the Jewish people recognize, and one of them is Passover, one of them is Pentecost, or let's see, there's a, the Jewish name for it is Shavuot, and then there's Tabernacle, Feast of Tabernacles, or what's called Sukkot. So those are the three that the Jewish people, by law, were required to attend every single year. Men and women and so forth would attend these. Now there are those; those three are the compulsory ones. Now there were actually seven Jewish feasts, and the seven feasts were three at the beginning of the year and three at the end of the year. But Pentecost was right in the middle as a beacon of power from Almighty God. How many know power was released on the day of Pentecost? In fact, Jesus had told them, don't, I mean, he's told them in Luke 24, 49, tarry or go and tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. One translation says, until you're clothed upon with power from on high. And then in Acts chapter 1, so we, they were clothed upon with power. And it was an invitation that Jesus gave them to rendezvous there and to have something very special happen to them when those tongues of fire came down on each one of them. And, boy, maybe it had to touch their heads because maybe that's where we get a have a problem, right? It's in our minds and our thinking, right? And so he, he gave them an invitation here in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, and it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which uh, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That's one of Jesus' last words before He ascended to heaven. Now, He'd been on the earth with the disciples for 40 days, but now He says, not many days hence, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How many as many days hence? Ten days. They were in that upper room for ten days, worshiping, praising God, giving gratitude and honor to the Heavenly Father. But this was an invitation to those disciples... Now, it says that when he was raised from the dead, he was seen by over 500 of his disciples. And my question is, there was only 120 in the upper room. What happened to the other 360? <laughs> no, 380, excuse me. <laughs> and maybe they were out golfing. Maybe they had something else to do, huh? <laughs> Going on a picnic or something. But anyhow, it's, it's kind of like today. We need to be sure that we're in that number and not 
out somewhere flitting around doing something that's irrelevant and not a priority to God. But anyhow, they showed up at, at Pentecost, and I want you to know they received power. The Bible says, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Everybody say power. power. Dunamis power. And it goes on to say, and you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so, let's read this, what happened there in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost, is Acts 2, 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them were filled. All 120 of them. By the way, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in that group too. You can read about it in, in uh, the book of Acts as well. She was there too. All filled with the Holy Ghost. And what they do? Began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, or as the Spirit enabled them, one translation says. They were clothed upon with this power. This endowment of power from on high. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about some blessings of Pentecost. Is that all right? Some blessings of Pentecost. The first one is power. <laughs> we just quoted Acts 1.8. You'll have power. That word power is dunamis. And that's the word we get the word dynamite from. Dynamite power is on the inside of you. Resurrection power is in you, according to Romans 8.11. And according to Ephesians 5, uh, 1... That power is the us word who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He what? Raised Him from the dead. There's resurrection power on the inside of you. Holy Ghost power. Now listen, the answer to your dilemmas in, in life, your emotional problems, your sicknesses, your bondages, and schizophrenia, and paranoia, and anxiety, whatever it might be, is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said, is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Marilyn Neubauer was here last Sunday. Ph.D. in divinity, by the way. And she shared how she had a test and showed a large tumor. And remember, she said later on, they did another test, and they said, oh my goodness, it's growing. It's undoubtedly malignant. So they were going to do surgery on a Wednesday to remove it, and she was believing God. She was believing God that if there were any more tests, it was going to show it's gone. Well, the, the female surgeon said, let's do some more tests on Tuesday and see what the situation is so that I'll know just when I go in there to operate exactly what I'm doing. They did the test, and this grapefruit-sized malignant tumor was totally gone. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that's Holy Ghost power? Amen. Amen. Totally gone. And she goes all over now sharing what, what God did for her. And the, the female doctor's nurse, or the, the uh, surgeon said, uh, wow. She says, I've heard of my other physician friends who've had miracles. This was my first one. <laughs> but you see, the Holy Ghost comes with dunamis power for the gifts of the Spirit. And by the way, power to help you resist the temptation to sin. Amen. Oh, how many know we're, we're in this flesh and we need something else. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to help keep us from functioning in the flesh. And He does that. Romans 8, 13 says how we through the Spirit. Everybody say through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit mortify or kill the deeds of the flesh. That's how we've got to do it. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, anyhow, point number one, everybody say Power. That's the blessings that we have. I, I just prayed for here just a, a month or so ago, well, maybe a month and a half, I prayed for a pastor, retired pastor friend of mine who had severe back and neck pain. And I said, well, what's the level? He says, it's over a 10. So anyhow, we got together and we prayed, and the pain left, both his neck and his back. Come on, praise him for it. Jesus is a healer, and I talked to him just last week, see if I, how he's doing. He said, no, no back pain, no neck pain. It's been gone ever since. 
So God's not a flash in a pan, is he? All right. So the second one is, first one is power, and the next blessing is peace. Everybody say peace. peace. He says, I'll keep in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on the Isaiah 26, 3. Peace that you can have in any, in the midst of, and to face any conflict that comes up in your life, whether large or small, he passes all understanding with his peace. Amen. In perilous times, in the end times, in difficult times, we can pray in the Spirit. And you know what? I'm driving down the road sometimes, and, and I don't have any, you know, my phone on or, or, you know, to listen to some preacher or something. Well, I find, my, you know, sometimes my mind will work overtime, and I just got to go ahead and pray in the Spirit. And when I pray in the Spirit, guess what happens? Peace comes. He's the Prince of Peace. He's called the God of Peace. And He comes on the scene. Soldiers on the battlefield. That's right. They can obtain peace from the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit. You know, the Bible says we shall go out with joy and... Uh, how does that go? In Isaiah 55, 12, we shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. You can be led by the peace of God. <laughs> Amen. That's called the inner witness. All you got to do is follow peace. Amen. Hook up with Him. Follow peace. If you get a check in your spirit, don't do that. Don't go that way. Huh? But if you got peace, then that's the right direction to go. So peace becomes an internal GPS to guide you in life so that you can be led by the Spirit. Hmm? Colossians 3.15 says that, doesn't it? It says, let the peace of God, right here, not up in your head now. You might not have peace in your head, but you might have peace down here. Follow that peace, see? Let the peace of God rule. And the word rule means to rule like an umpire. What's an umpire do? He says, that's a fair ball. That's a foul ball. You're out. You're safe. Huh? That's, that's a strike. That's a ball. So peace is to be the umpire in your life. What's he do? He calls the shots. He leads you by peace. Huh? Did you ever have something you just didn't feel good about? Is, well, I should stay away from that because I just got to check in my spirit. Right? About the school you're supposed to go to, or the house that you're supposed to buy, or the person you're supposed to marry, or whatever, or the investment that you're about to make. Sure, follow peace. That's the way to do it. The third one is protection. Protection. So power, peace, and protection for you and your family. Holy Ghost can put a wall of protection around you. How many believe you can pray and believe God for protection? For 46 years, flying single-engine aircraft, I prayed and believed God, and He did. He kept us as we flew up, up and down the East Coast, from Florida, Alabama to New York, and so forth. He kept us in peace, or He kept us because we trusted in Him. That's, he, he gave us protection. So Zechariah 2.5 talks about a wall of fire around you. You can have a wall of fire around you to protect you. Psalm 4, verse 8 says, He alone causes me to dwell in safety. Amen. Are you looking to Him today to keep you safe? To tell you, hey, don't go to work this way. Go to work this way. Because there may be a major accident or something that you're going to avoid by doing what He says to do in following peace. Hmm? When we were in uh, Florida, we were on I-4. And that's a nightmare, by the way. <laughs> Some of you probably know that. I-4, it's crazy. But anyhow, our GPS said, get off of I-4. So we followed the GPS and it went all the way around and later on put us back on I-4. You know what it did? It took us around an accident or some jam up. That's a smart GPS, huh? But how many of you know you got a smart GPS called the Holy Ghost? It lives on the inside of you. Not only is he a, is he a genius, but he's also a gentleman. He's so gentle. He leads you. By that peace. Amen. Amen. So we can believe for protection, can't we? So power, peace, protection. And it's just important to wait on Him and get clear instructions to avoid a mishap. Amen. Uh, the next one. I know I like this, and this is one of my favorites. Blessings of Pentecost. Presence. The presence of God. Oh, I love His presence. I'm big on this one. I love when the presence shows up on the scene as we are in praise and adoration. we got a wonderful worship team that, that is so sensitive and just leads us right into the very throne room and to the very manifested presence of God. 
See, there's the indwelling presence that we all have. We know that the Spirit abides within, or the temple of the Holy Spirit. But then there's also, the, in addition to the abiding presence, we have the omnipresence. God is everywhere. But there's a step further than that, and this one has a tangibility attached to it, and it's called the manifest presence of God. Oh, I love the manifest presence of God. I sense His presence right now, don't you? Woo, glory to God, yeah. <laughs> I love His presence. And so, this presence is very important. I remember when we were in a fire hall, and we had Mike Anzavino leading worship for us. And we had this one guy that had been an alcoholic, and he'd come in the door to the fire hall where we were having church, and as soon as he'd get inside, he'd drop to his knees. He couldn't stand up because of the manifested presence of God. Lots of wonderful things happen in the manifested presence. You find reconciliation. You find transformation. You find peace. You find restoration of your soul. Glory to God. You're being reinvigorated, huh? You get strengthened in His presence. Glory to God. Times of refreshing. Acts 3.19, in the presence of the Lord. Oh, if there's anything we want in this church, we want His presence. David said, this one thing have I desired, and this will I follow after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To what? To behold the beauty. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Remember Moses said in Exodus, th Exodus 33, 14, he says, Lord, show me your presence. And God said to him in verse 14, 33, 14, he says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And, and Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> if God's presence stays back there, you better stay back there. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. I remember one time we were flying. And uh, no, I was, I was by myself, I think. I was coming back from a trip. And, and the alternator went bad in the airplane. And it just started to drain the battery in the airplane. And I was still 20 miles from the airport. And I... I couldn't raise, I couldn't get a hold of, of approach control or the tower or anything because the battery was dead. You couldn't, wouldn't send a strong signal. And so I just stayed in the peace of God, stayed believing for His presence and His, His solution to every problem, right? The protection that we talked about. And so I sent out the, the broadcast and here's some other plane between me and the airport. There was a plane, and he heard me. There was enough juice to get to him. <laughs> and he, so he called the tower for me, and the tower gave me permission to land, do a straight-in approach and land, and this guy relayed the message. The tower told him, and he told the, the tower told him, he told me. And so I was able to get, get in. So, you know, the Lord will just take care of you. If you stay tuned in and stay tuned into the presence Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let me give you one more. What do we say? Uh, uh, power, presence, protection, peace, and then this one, prosperity. Oh, yeah, God wants you to prosper. Second Chronicles 20.20 20 says, Believe in the Lord, and so shall ye be established. Hallelujah. You're not unstable. You're established. When you put that word in you, you become established, don't you? And then he goes on to say, believe in his prophets, and so shall you prosper. How many believe prosperity is in the Bible? Oh, Absolutely. David said, I was once young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So what is prosperity? It's simply having your needs met, enough to help bless you and somebody else. Have a full supply, that's right. And so, uh, so you can be established, and you can prosper. Hallelujah. And, second, and uh, so, let's see, what is it? Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Oh, yeah, the Holy Spirit's a miracle worker. Glory to God. Isaiah, look at Isaiah 45, 2. Isaiah 45, 2. How many love the Lord today? 
How many love His Word? Glory to God. Isaiah 45, 3. Yeah, 45, 3 of Isaiah says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. No, that's verse 2. Verse 3, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Hidden riches. One translation says concealed riches of secret places. He wants to give you concealed riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Secret riches. Hidden things. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and hidden things. Amen. So, uh, was it Proverbs uh, 13, 22? Where the Bible says, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. In the end times, the wealth of the wicked and the porn salesmen and the whiskey salesmen and those flying around in his corporate jets because of it, their wealth is going to be transferred. It's going to be a great wealth transfer into the hands of the believers those whom God can trust to get the gospel out. Amen. The gospel's free, but it costs something to disseminate it. Amen. So if he can trust you with it, if he can, he'll get it into your hand if he can get it through your hand. Amen. So there's a great wealth transfer coming. Proverbs 13, 22, and I'm looking forward to it. How about you? Amen. Glory to God. So in the last days, that's what's going to happen. There's going to come a great wealth transfer. He is the resource of everything, isn't He? He is our source. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the gold and the silver that's in those hills. He knows where it is, too. Glory to God. I remember, and I'll just close with this, <clears throat> when we built this sanctuary, we were talking to the contractor, sitting in his office, just moving in faith. We'd already built the other parts of the church where we needed a sanctuary. <laughs> and he, he said, finally, as we're looking over and deliberating over the plans, finally he says, well, when are we going to do this? I says, well, we're believing God. And this is a Christian contract. Do you know what he said? So you need the money, right? I says, that's it. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to loan you the money. I forget now how much it was, thousands of dollars. Was it, uh, was it 36? 36,000? He said, I'm going to loan you the money. He said, now you'll pay me back with interest. But it was, it was reasonable interest. And I says, we will be responsible to pay you back. And the contractor gave us the money to build our sanctuary. Amen. Amen. And we paid him back too. Yeah. We wrote him a nice letter after it was all paid for. He said, thank you so much. <laughs> but you know, that's unheard of for a contractor to give you the money to do the work. Isn't that something? Isn't God good? Let's lift your hands and praise Him for it today. Musicians, if you'd come, thank you, Father God. You're so good. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Oh, we thank you for your provision, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside, that brings peace to us, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. To take care of your health. Take care of your children. Provide for you. Straighten out your squarely thinking. <laughs> Give you a sound mind. Amen. A disciplined mind. Oh. Walk with you every step of the way. I'm telling you, life is worth living for Jesus. It is worth learning what the Word of God says. Amen. Putting it in your heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, those of you watching there today, if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, now's the time. Let's pray this together. Let's all pray it together. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Father. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. 
Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for saving me, and for a first-class plan for my life. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's praise Him for it today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you prayed that prayer and meant it in your heart, you're a child of God. You're born again. You received the free gift of salvation. You might be walking, watching in New Zealand like some guy was watching in New Zealand. You might be watching in the United Kingdom. You might be watching in Afghanistan. You might be watching in Iran. I want you to know there's no distance in the Spirit. God loves you. And he, you are a child of God right now because of a free gift that He's paid. He's pr paid the price for you to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. So receive it today. Send us a little email or something. Let us know you got saved. You know, there are lots of people watching. People send us money. Yeah, all over the place sending us money here. That's right. <clears throat> because of uh, the broadcast. Well, we're grateful for that. And we appreciate the finances. Glory be to God. So, Father, thank you. We love you, Lord. Let's just praise him as we go today. And listen, if you need prayer for something, just come on up and we'll pray for you. Okay? I'll hang out up here a little bit. And if you, maybe, now, let's do this. Prayer counselors. We still have some prayer counselors, don't we, Lynn? Let's have prayer counselors stand up here. And if you'd like prayer this morning, you come on up and let these people pray for you. Let's worship him as we go. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. He led me out of the desert, brought me into his streams, river of living water, turned my bitter into sweet, and all my burdens lifted. You took the shackles off my feet There's no sound louder than a captive set free So let, so let the redeemed of the Lord say so Sing of His promises evermore Pour out your thankfulness Let it overflow Let the redeemed of the Lord In the morning, springing up in my soul, there's life worth living. Cause he, cause he calls me his own, and there's a hallelujah after sweet victory. And there's no sound louder than a captive set free. There's no sound, no, there's no sound louder than a captive set free. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of His promises evermore. Say so, 
Thank you for the freedom we have in you today, Lord. You're the ultimate freedom fighter for us, God. Thank you. Amen. You all have a great day.